Thank you for joining us today on Synthesis Workshop. My name is Saminan and I am a new editorial board member on this platform. For today's research spotlight episode, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Hoi Ming Zhang. Hoi Ming pursued his bachelor's degree in chemistry at the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, which is also known as KAIST. During his undergraduate study, he worked under the supervision of Professor Mu Hyung Bak. During this period, his research work is focused on computational chemistry for reaction mechanism study. During his undergrad, he also had a chance to work Yoon's research group at UW Madison as a visiting researcher. Later, Hoeming joined to HBC group as a graduate student. Currently, he is pursuing his postdoctoral research in the Shukbuk Chang's research group. With this, I hand it over to you, Hoeming. Thank you so much for joining and sharing your work with us today. Thank you for your nice introduction, and I am truly honored to be invited to this synthesis workshop. And today it is my great pleasure to share my recent research on the mechanistic snapshots of rhodium catalyzed acid nitrine transfer. Catalytic CH amination is a highly desirable process for accessing synthetically and pharmaceutically valuable amine products. In the Chang group, uh, we are mainly investigating CH amination reactions using transition metal catalysts and various amine sources, mainly through the nitranoid transfer pathway. There are many available amino iodinates and hydroxyamine derivatives. And recently, we have discovered the particular utility of dioxazolones as acid nitranoid precursors. So, dioxazolones are one of the emerging amino precursors precursors that can be easily synthesized from the corresponding carboxylic acids in two steps. And historically, their acid nitrine transfer reactivity was discovered in 1968 to form sulfoximines under the harsh reaction conditions. And later in 2014, Bohm and co-workers used photochemical reaction conditions to achieve the similar outcomes. In our group, we are trying to use dioxazolone for the catalytic CH amidation reactions. Indeed, in 2015, we reported a rhodium catalyzed CN bond coupling reactions of arenes by inner spear type mechanism. And in 2018, uh, we extended the mechanistic framework to the outer spear type CH insertion pathway to eventually synthesize Asia cyclic compounds such as gamma lactams using iridium catalysts. And in both examples, transition metal acyl nitranoid species are postulated as the key intermediates. The generally proposed mechanism of metal acyl nitranoid formation involves metal dioxazolone binding and decarboxylation, validation of the intermediacy of metal acyl nitranoid species in the catalytic reaction uh, is an ongoing challenge. Indeed, uh, while our group and other research groups have proposed several metal acyl nitranoid intermediates for catalytic CH amidation, none of them have been explicitly characterized. Because of the reactive nature of metal nitranoid species, there are only a few examples of isolated or detected reactive metal nitranoid species. So recent studies by the Batley group have demonstrated the use of a Berkey ligand system to stabilize the nitranoid core. And also the Powers group applied photocrystallographic analysis to a dirhodium bound agite complex to capture the transient rhodium nitranoid species in the crystalline matrix. However, for our system using dioxazolone, it is quite difficult to isolate such nitranoid species, mainly because of the two agents. First, uh, since dioxazolone is a weakly binding ligand, the characterization of the initial dioxazolone coordination event is difficult. Even though the proposed metal nitranoid species is formed, uh, we still need to block various decomposition pathways, such as Curtius type rearrangement. And therefore, to achieve the goal of characterizing elusive transition metal acyl nitranoid species, we need to strategically design a new system. To overcome these key challenges, we came up with the idea of designing a bidentate dioxazolone ligand system that contains the nitranoid precursor. And by doing so, we expected to increase the binding affinity of the nitrine precursor to the metal center. 
And also, once we could isolate the metal bound dioxazolone complex, we could control the next decarboxylation step to observe the postulated nitrinoid species. In this regard, inspired by the light harvesting octahedral rhodium catalyst system developed by Meggers and co workers, uh, we believed that we might have a better chance if the nitrinoid formation is triggered by the photo irradiation. So in this work, we have newly designed a photoresponsive octahedral rhodium catalyst system that can undergo catalytic CH amidation reactions under the photochemical reaction conditions. And furthermore, we were fortunate to catch a glimpse of nitrinoid formation by X-ray photocrystal rapid analysis using rhodium dioxazolone complexes. To start with, we prepared a cyclometallated rhodium complex decorated with phenylpyrazole ligands. When this rhodium acetonitrile complex was mixed with pyridinyl dioxazolone in dichloromethane, a quantitative amount of rhodium dioxazolone complex rhodium-2 could be observed. The crystal structure of this rhodium dioxazolone complex with a Berkey barf anion was also obtained. Next, uh, UV based measurement were performed to analyze the photochemical character of the rhodium dioxazolone complex. Interestingly, uh, while dioxazolone 1 shows almost no absorption in the visible light region, when it forms a complex with rhodium, it shows a, a absorption feature around 360 nanometer to 400 nanometer. This absorption feature was further characterized by TDDFT simulation. And from this simulation, the lowest absorption band was found at 375 nanometer, which could be signed as the metal to ligand charge transfer nature from the rhodium D orbital to the pi star orbital of the dioxazolone ligand. After analyzing the photochemical properties of the newly designed rhodium dioxazolone complex, we next conducted a DFT calculation on the potential activation pathway of dioxazolone complex. After the ligand coordination, the CO2 liberation barrier on the singlet reaction pathway is 24 kcal to form the postulated singlet nitrinoid species, rhodium-3. Interestingly, once rhodium-2 is excited into its triplet state at 51 kcal, the next stepwise NO bond cleavage and CO bond cleavage steps were almost barrierless to form a triplet nitrinoid intermediate. And here, the estimated energy difference between the singlet and triplet nitrinoid species is only 1.7 kcal. We were curious whether we could monitor the formation of rhodium acyl nitrinoid species from the rhodium dioxazolone complex. To test this idea of light triggered decarboxylation, we conducted an X ray photocrystallographic analysis. This experiment was done by Dr. Dong Kim at IBS, and we conducted the experiment at Hohang Accelerator Laboratory, which provides synchrotron radiation. For the setup of the photocrystallography experiment, we placed an external 370 nanometer light source beneath to the sample, and upon irradiation, we conducted X-ray diffraction analysis using synchrotron radiation at 100 Kelvin. And benefited from the synchrotron radiation, the data collection could be finished within a few minutes. And interestingly, uh, if we subject this rhodium to BARF sample for the photocrystallography experiment using 370 nanometer light source, after 13 minutes of irradiation at 100 Kelvin, we were possible to obtain the structure of rhodium acyl nitrinoid species along with the extruded CO2 molecule that resides in between the two CF3 groups of the barf anion. When looking at the structural parameters, we observed the significant contraction of rhodium nitrogen bond lengths from 2.15 to 2.02 angstrom. And also, the CO double bond lengths of the captured carbon dioxide were 1.06 and 1.17 angstrom, which well match with the known CO double bond lengths of 1.16 angstrom. And also, notably, when we conduct X ray diffraction analysis over time, uh, we could observe the decreasing occupancy of the original rhodium dioxazolone complex. 
In addition to the photo crystallographic analysis, we also conducted mass spectrometry experiment in collaboration with Professor Mihi Lim at KAIST. Using multi mass measurement equipped with 355 nanometer laser, we could observe the mass value that matches with the rhodium acyl nitrino species. The isotope labeling experiment with 15N sample gives one mass unit shifted value. Having identified that rhodium acyl nitrinoid species could be produced upon photo irradiation conditions, we were next curious about the reactivity of the generated rhodium acyl nitrinoid species. Indeed, when irradiating the sample with benzene or cyclohexane, we observed the corresponding sp2 or sp3 CH emidation adduct, and the structures of the product complexes were further confirmed by X ray crystallographic analysis. Fortunately, the stoichiometric reactivity could be further expanded to the catalytic reaction, and this photocatalytic CH emidation required visible light irradiation conditions where it can give diverse range of sp2 or sp3 CH emidation products. Notably, we could also introduce 15N labeled amide fragment to benzene when using isotopically labeled dioxazolam. For disubstituted arenes, the amidation was conducted at more electron-rich carbon, and also when employed panel as the substrate, also CH amidation product was selectively formed. From the sp3 CH amidation side, when subjecting adamantane as the substrate, the tertiary CH bond amidation was preferred compared to the secondary CH amidation. Next, we were curious on which spin state of the rhodium nitrinoid species is active for the CEH amidation. And to extract the electronic nature of the rhodium acyl nitrinoid species, some elucidative mechanistic probe experiments were examined under the catalytic reaction conditions. First, an intermolecular competition experiment between cyclohexane and cyclohexane D12 showed a low kinetic isotope effect value of 2.13. And also when subjecting a substrate with an enantio enriched tertiary sp3 CH center, we observed a complete retention of the stereochemistry in the CH amidation product. The absolute stereochemistry was assigned at, by the X-ray crystallographic analysis. This mechanistic probe experiment indicates that the concerted CH insertion mechanism might be operated throughout the catalytic reaction. We also conducted further DFT calculations on the CH amidation, and further computational study indicates that the concerted CH insertion barrier on the singlet energy surface is 2.8 kq per mole lower than that of the hydrogen atom abstraction pathway on the triplet energy surface. On the basis that singlet nitrinoid species might be responsible for the key reactivity, we could expect an electrophilic nature of the rhodium nitrinoid species. Indeed, such hypothesis was successfully showcased by a solvolysis type reaction of rhodium dioxazolone complexes in acetone solvent. And by using photo NMR monitoring experiment with 365 nanometer of light source in acetone D6 solvent, we observed a stoichiometric transformation of rhodium dioxazolone into an acetone incorporated rhodium dioxazole complex in 75%. Such reactivity could be explained when considering acetone as a former oxygen nucleophile. Further computational analysis highlighted that the dioxazole formation could be explained as a stepwise NO bond formation and CO bond formation where the overall barrier of this process is around 11 kq per mole from the singlet nitrinoid species. In contrast, on the triplet energy surface, the analogous anode bond forming event requires a much higher barrier. When looking at the LUMO of the singlet rhodium acyl nitrinoid species, it features a rhodium nitrogen pi star character, thereby can act as a potential electropile for the external nucleophile. Based on this observation, we were next curious whether we could monitor this solution page with nitrine transfer reactivity in the solid reaction page. Fortunately, we were able to prepare a rhodium dioxazolone sample 
co-crystallized with an external acetone molecule. In this crystal structure, the distance between the acetone molecule and the centroid of the dioxazolone ring was 2.695 angstrom. When this rhodium dioxazolone and acetone co-crystal was subjected for the X-ray photocrystallographic experiment, uh, we were possible to monitor the formation of corresponding rhodium dioxazole in 19% at 135 Kelvin with 370 nanometer irradiation. We believe that such monitoring of the reaction progress in the crystalline matrix is an additional compelling evidence that validates the rhodium acyl nitrenoid intermediacy in the nitrenoid transfer reactions. To summarize today's talk, we have elucidated the intermediacy of transition metal acyl nitrenoid species, which is a key intermediate in the catalytic CH emulation. Strategic design of target rhodium dioxazolone complex and photocrystallographic analysis gave us the complete mechanistic snapshot of the rhodium catalyzed acyl nitrine transfer process. Before close, I would like to thank my supervisor, Professor Sukbok Chang, for his insight and guidances throughout my PhD study and this work, and also to Dr. Dong Kim for the amazing crystallographic works. And I would like to thank you all for your attention, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today on this research spotlight episode. And thank you, Min Jung, for this great talk. If you enjoyed this episode, you can always support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast. Feel free to send us any questions and comments you have. Follow us on Twitter, stay up to date, and we will see you all in the next episode.